It's that time of the week where we rank these rookie running backs to get a good feel of the class. We've been doing this periodically all offseason long, and now we're just adding to the group. I'm going to add three more running backs and make it a total of 15 running backs to rank. And this is an exercise I try to do every week just to force myself to talk about some of these running backs and to also look into them. It allows me to deep dive the tape a little bit more, prep with the numbers and everything else so I can get a good feel of the class. That way I'm still hanging strong for you guys. So if that's something you're into, looking at these rankings, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's only going to help you going out, going forward, building your dynasty teams and getting you ready for the rookie drafts. But let's go ahead and go to the tier maker. Let's look at the selection here. So we have five groups five tiers to rank running backs in we all know what's in tier s the top tier the stud tier whatever you want to call it it's Bijan robinson and he's going to be there no matter what throughout the whole season even if he lands in a bad situation stud tier because you don't get many prospects like this you get one every few years every five years three years whatever it is you get a top tier running back prospect that people have been clamoring about for multiple years, you see it, everybody knows it, and they're just waiting to get that back. Last one was like Saquon Barkley. You can make a case for Jonathan Taylor, but there wasn't a loud group of people just waiting. There was a lot of skepticism over him. He kind of slowly grew on the draft community. Bijan has been in the spot for well over a year, two years. I mean, for some people, when he was in high school, like him doing backflips, catching the ball while working out, all that stuff solidifies him. Good numbers, good athleticism, really killing it, breaking tackles, broke more tackles than any running back in college football, catches the ball well. He belongs here, and this is where he's going to stay. Tier A, of course, Jameer Gibbs, Zach Evans, Sean Tucker, those are my big three right now. Some people are sketchy on Zach Evans, which you can be, which you can definitely be. I can make a case for why you should be sketchy. Uh, Sean Tucker, some people are sketchy on him because they don't like how he runs between the tackles, but I like how he catches the ball in the backfield. I like his home run ability, and I want to see where his draft capital is going to be at. Jameer Gibbs is pretty much a lock to get good draft capital just from everything we've heard. Catches the ball in the backfield. He's been great at Georgia Tech, transitioned well at Alabama, had a good collegiate career, and we're, I'm mixed up with all three of these guys. And Tier B, it's got some good guys in it as well. Zach Charbonnet, Tank Bigsby, Devin Chain. The one thing is I kind of want to move Zach Charbonnet up to Tier A. I'm growing on it. Him not going to the Senior Bowl is a very good indication that – He's got good word that he's getting good draft capital. And I pretty much got a good feel that he's getting good draft capital. He's a big back. He's going to be there three downs. Catches ball in the backfield. He's going to have a good opportunity to have a good-sized role early in his career. I feel like he can mix it up with any of these guys, really, especially in the right situation. I'm, I can really say that about all the backs in B and C tiers. But Zach Charbonnet, I feel like... Like you're either really, really in on him or you're kind of in on him. Been watching him. He transitioned really quick to Michigan. Had double-digit touchdowns. First ever running back to have double-digit touchdowns as a freshman. Then 2020 happened, which happened to everybody. And then transferred to UCLA and did nothing but have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. And then proved this year with more receptions on his career. So he did well. You can't really knock him. He's a bigger back. He's not a speed guy, but he runs like... A 220 plus pound running back, and he's got a lot of power, and he's a guy that keep an eye on, and I think he's going to get the draft capital. You might be safer with him over Evans. I think the Evans here is the athleticism, is the highlights. What you see on tape is dangerous. He's gangster at that. Five star prospect can catch the ball in the backfield. Does a lot of things well. I can't say everything well. Limited snaps, pass blocking. I'm talking like 37 on his career. Like, not many. A lot of people on their scouting reports will say, Zach Evans can't pass block. Kind of malpractice because we didn't really see it. In three years, 37 snaps, according to PFF. That could be wrong because they're wrong on a lot of shit. But that data is there. So Zach Evans got some question marks. Why is he only pass blocking 37 snaps in three years? 
partial season in his second year due to the injury. That second year at TCU would have been gangbusters. Would have been over 1,000 yards. Would have been double-digit touchdowns. Imagine if he didn't have that injury, didn't have that weirdness at the end of the year too, and played through that and maintained that production and then transferred to Ole Miss and had this season. I think a lot of people will be a little bit higher, talking him up a little bit more. He has a lot of upside. The thing about him is you can move him here because there is some iffiness, but the upside's so grand. It's so huge that you want to swing for defenses. The NFL is going to tell us what to do with Zach Evans. That's the thing. The NFL is going to tell us what to do. Once the NFL does say, hey, he's back in the third round, He's a fourth rounder. You're going to have to drop him a bit. But until then, you're going to have to be skeptic. Devin Chain is getting a lot of clout on Twitter. And I believe so is PPR Prowess. Catching the ball in the backfield, that speed, a speed guy, jigsaw guy. A lot of people would have him in tier A. I'm having him in like B, mid-range type deal. Just being safe. I think it's logical. Some people would have him in around C range because he's smaller. That's logical, too. I wouldn't pump him down here to D range. That, that'd be ignorant. Back into B, but you only got two guys in B now, now that Zach Charbonnet graduated. Tank Bigsby, a lot of people sleeping on this dude, but you can't really sleep on anybody in this class either. There's a lot of good running backs in this class. Tank Bigsby's good. Tank Bigsby could really steal someone's job at the next level. Runs with power. He's a thumper. He's got some good bursts. He is a scary back, and he played behind that bad offensive line at Auburn. Man, that did not do him much justice, and I think he's really going to sneak up on some folks this year. That's something you want to look at. We have some more running backs, though. Kendra Miller, Izzy, Abaconda, however the fuck you say that. Kenny McIntosh, and those three are there. Kenny McIntosh at the Senior Bowl, but, man, that guy is explosive. The thing is here. You're like Bruce, Kenny McIntosh, catches the ball out of the backfield, super explosive. Devin Chain catching the ball out of the backfield, super explosive. I get it. I think you can make case a chain either around this area. You can make that case. Some people are making this case. I'm just going to have him chill in there. Kendra Miller, let's talk about him real quick. Big back, explosive, elusive in the second level. Draft capital is going to be inter- interesting. Everybody in C, everybody in B, some of these guys in A. We're waiting for the draft. Big guy, elusive, quick, can really make defenses pay. Tier C here, in other years, probably like pushing tier A. That's the thing about this class. Kendra Miller, in other years, would be pushing in this tier A group. In other years. Devin Chain, Tank Bigsby. This is how deep this class is. You can't look at these tiers and be like, okay, tier D sucks, tier C sucks, B is a little better, A is good. S is excellent. You don't look at it like this. This whole batch here, great. Great prospects. Like, amazing. Like, there's a lot of good things in this class. Izzy here. He's got speed. Home run threat. Some size to him. Can be a three-down guy. Limited catching the ball the backfield, but he can do it. And when you're explosive, get your yards after contact. You know you can get yards after the catch. That is something you want. I'm not questioning that that much. I think he can do it. Uh, catching the ball, catching low acuity targets. All these running backs can really do that. There, it's not a, really that big of a thing anymore. There, there are some. You catch your Andre Williams's here and there. That run old running back from Boston College with the stone hands. But you know what? Most of these top tier guys, man, they got solid chops in the passing game. Just some are higher levels than others, like Kenny McIntosh here. Dude's got speed. Dude's electric. You don't have to have him to be a three-down grinder or a full workload guy. You just need him to step in, catch a few balls a game, get a few carries a game. Dude can really hammer a hole for you in your fantasy team. Want to be a good discount. I really want to move up either Kendra Miller or Izzy or both to be, but then Kenny's just lonely at sea. How about B and C just hang out together? Because these guys are all good. And then we have a weird C tier. So we'll try and split up D tier here. But honestly, I think Tank might get draft capital over these guys maybe. But maybe not. Maybe not. That's the thing. And Devin. And these guys are going to be up there a bit. And they got the talent. All of these guys. So I can't really split this up. That's really not fair. Especially when you look at Devin and Chan and Kenny McIntosh. 
Both these guys catch the ball in the backfield. Both of them are electric. Kenny McIntosh, more explosive. A chain's more of a jigsaw guy, though. McIntosh can handle more carries, if you want to look at it that way. Really depends on what the NFL wants to do. Whoever drafts a chain is going to draft them to use them. So you don't want to play that game like, well, if he goes to the right OC. If you're getting drafted top 75 draft capital, you're drafting a chain here, and he's a guy like this, they're going to try and figure it out. And the only way that could really hurt him is if there's a switch in coaching staffs or something like that, then maybe that can switch up a bit. But Chain's got some goods in his game to where he can be productive. Kendra Miller's got speed to burn, and he's got size. Izzy is good in his own right and tank. These guys, I'm hard on. That's why That's why it's a tier, though. There's no ranking in this tier. These guys are flippity-floppy. Here, same thing. I'll tell you this. I'm a Sean Tucker guy. I've always been a fan of Zach Charbonnet. Evans interests me. But I do see the downside. I like I'm not gonna let the highlights, the tape I've watched, the games I've watched over the years screw me into not knowing that there are some craziness. He has one of the craziest recruiting stories of all college football ever because he led on so many colleges. What if he's just got some screw looses or something? Who knows? But you you don't want to throw that in the prospect profile, but you kinda can't do it if you're not being objective as well because Zach Evans it's got some weirdness in his profile like how can you only handle 37 pass blocking snaps on your career and then you have this weird recruiting thing where you let on like 20 some colleges before making your decision it happened to be fucking TCU when you're a five star back all that stuff you're taking the ACT or whatever the hell that was Early, missing half of your high school playoff game, coming back halfway through it so you can go get um declared to your school early. It's a bunch of weirdness with him, but I can't put that in the profile, but you kind of do. It, it That's the thing. There's some weirdness with his profile, but let's move on with some of these guys. So I added in three guys. There's other guys not on here, but we're adding a few guys each time. That way... It gives me some opportunity to look into these guys a little bit more, think about these guys a little bit more, look at the stats and all that, prep the spreadsheets, all the good stuff. That, and if I throw in random jabronis, then that just throws me into a loop when we're doing my workload. So C and D, I was prepped to having things different, but my mind got wandering. But let's start things off throwing these guys in D. Taiji Spears, Mohamed Ibrahim, Rashawn Johnson, Evan Hall, Chase Brown. So last video, I had Chase Brown and Rashawn Johnson in there. I'm prepping you guys for the Senior Bowl because I wanted to talk about them. I also want to talk about Evan Hall, Tajay Spears, both of them from the Senior Bowl. And I also wanted to bring up Mohamed Ibrahim because I don't see many people talking about him. But that dude has been damn productive. He's old as shit, though. He's an old running back. But he came back from an Achilles injury. Not only did he come back from an Achilles injury, but he rushed for damn near 100 yards in each game last season in 2022 hurt his Achilles at 2021 came back 2022 big thick powerful runner not expecting him to get top tier draft capital day three somewhere he should get drafted he should should expect that but he's a pounder but he could be a guy that surprises you because he's very stout on the fundamentals just gets the dirty stuff catches the ball a little bit he's just that kind of back he is that kind of dude what I like about Rashawn Johnson, I'm going to throw him up there because I really like him as a running back. When I look at all these guys, he stands out to me. Big, physical running back with some good athleticism. Former quarterback, one of the top quarterback recruits in the country when he was coming out. Switched over to running back, played well, cerebral. A lot of things to like about him. A lot of scouts mentioning him up a bit too. You've been hearing a lot of things about him. I like Evan Hall as a sleeper in a late round of rookie drafts. Due to his ability to catch the ball in the backfield, he's got some size to his game. Just those bigger running backs. He's around 215-ish or whatever. I have to look that, that back up. But those bigger running backs who catch the ball in the backfield, they have a chance to get a lot of carries and be used in the passing game. Their roles can't be switched up too much. So that's something you want to look at. And they hold more value that way when their late round picks, UDFAs, due to that having no sunk cost into their player profile for their NFL team. 
So being able to hold down multiple roles is a big thing. Chase Brown was super productive this year. So was on Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears looking good coming off that, that knee injury, coming back hard, looking strong at the senior bowl. A lot of people like him. The thing about Tajay Spears, draft community, draft Twitter, everybody loves him. Everybody wants to bring him up. If I didn't put him in this video, which I thought about didn't, just, just see who would comment. Someone would bring him up. Be like, hey, why is he not in here? Where's he at? Where's he at? Forgot Tajay Spears. Ha, ha, ha. But the thing about him, he's got some juice. Good in the passing game. Can do just about everything. Very thin frame, though. So he does not appear to be a guy to hold it down for three downs. Be a workhorse. 20 carry a game guy or whatever, but he can still be productive from a fantasy football standpoint, especially if he earns the earns a, a role with an NFL team. Usually most teams want to use two backs anyways, one back being probably the better back getting more carries, the other guy working in. You know, he, he's got some pop to his step, so he's a home run threat. All three of these guys right here at the bottom, Brown, Hall, Ibrahim, those guys, can really surprise you. I want to move Brown up because he had a big year this year. Was interested in him all year. I've been watching him all year and then praying that he blew up Michigan. And he did well against Michigan, but I was hoping that he'd lead the line I passed. And that was my goal. Chase Brown just killing the Wolverines. That was my hope. Evan Hall came out starting the season strong this year. Looking good catching the ball in the backfield. That's a great thing. Muhammad Abraham, man. Sneaky guy to get in the back end of your rookie drafts. That's why I brought him in here. That's why we're discussing him today. Big, thick, powerful runner. I think I'm going to stop these tiers off here. They make sense from what my brain's working with today. We have a stud with Bijan. A tier's looking good, looking kind of frosty. B tier, makes sense. Makes sense. Those are some good backs. C and D, you kind of wedge them together, but I kind of got to split off a bit. But those backs... Pretty solid as well. Let me know in the comments below how you ranking these backs, who you looking forward to draft, and also who do you want me to throw in as an addition to these ranks for next week. I want to thank you for watching. Smash that subscribe button on the way out. It's only going to help you going forward. And I'll catch you on the next video.